low again. With us today are a trio of persons who represent different faces of the Hollywood scene. Please join us in welcoming Ruth Webb, Dr. David Glick, and Mark Harris. And now, here's your puckish man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe. I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio, making a picture again. You don't know how much I've missed all of you. And I promise you I'll never desert you again. Because after Salome, we'll make another picture and another picture. You see, this is my life. It always will be. There's nothing else. Just us. And the cameras. And those wonderful people out there in the dark. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Just saw the opening clip. When you see that... It makes me sick. Pourquoi? Uh, this is probably the worst 25 years I've ever had in my life with this little monster. He never pays his commissions. 25 years means that you managed him for 25 years? I got him out of the ash can. I'm going to do my best to put him back in the ash can. Right. I don't think we ought to even waste time talking about Mickey Rooney because we have two wonderful guests here but Ruth, who are but much more deserving than this little son of a bitch. Really? Is it that much? You have this feeling for him? I have no feeling for him anymore at all. He used me. Okay. It's not only the people don't pay their commissions. A lot of people don't, including the producers when they take it out of the salary. Right. However, Mickey pays with praise. He takes out ads, Ruth, I love you. Ruth this, Ruth this, right. Ruth this. And I did. I got him out of an ash can. Believe me, I got him out of an ash can. And then Rejuvenating his career means that's I have done everything in his career also to keep him in it when he's trying to screw himself up, right, which he right. does continually. He talks too much. So do I. Let's talk about some interesting now, people. No, I want to talk about Ruth Webb first. First, Ruth. Yes. I want to talk about the business you started. You were a singer. You were a girl singer in New I York City. I was a girl. I was a girl. Yes, you were. <laughs> Working clubs, cabarets, then became an agency. Girl singer. Where did you I start? I wasn't just a girl singer. I, oh, well, ladies. I, singer, I was whatever. a. I started in show business when I was ten years old. Actually, my father backed a company right. that my aunt, who was a, a, a producer director, directed. And until I was fifteen, I was with this stock company. And then I started getting into Broadway shows. And then because I didn't like to go on the road, because I always got sick and wound up sleeping with a leading man, and it was just really. <laughs> Are you one of those ladies that sleep with our well, leading man? I get man? lonely. I look at lonely. I can't stand to be alone. So anyway, I'd come home, and I'd always get kicked downstairs and get a divorce. Uh -huh. and <laughs> so I started working the nightclubs because I, 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 I couldn't get into that much trouble. Right, I was right, right, right home. But in the, in the, uh, in, in, in the uh, nightclub area, I said I didn't have to travel. I didn't have to, to get uh, you know, all involved with people and all the rest of it. But I did get myself involved with the mafia because they... they uh, well, I was supporting my husband, mm -hmm. and his name was Albert Benajam, known to the press as Inajam Benajam. Right. We got a lot of that stuff on him. And rather than have the union unionize his factory, he had a bottle cap and dauber factory. He became the president of the union, mm -hmm. and he was paying all these union things all the time, and I'm supporting the family. Well, I finally found out. And I picketed the union. Mm -hmm. I got a pornographic artist Oops. who was a fan of mine, and he did these great big <laughs> things with the... Um, prison uniform right. and everything else on stabbing the, the, the stabbing the poor little workers to death and I said we made all the we made all the headlines constantly I made headlines long before I became an agent but Ruth well you're an agent but you were booking stars on Broadway shows Jane Powell you booked Jane Powell you did all these I booked Howard Keel. Grayson. You did, I booked uh, well let's let the audience know who you were handled not just Mickey Rooney but let's know well, that Mickey you handled Rooney a lot of MGM Broadway stars and Let's moved to California. Wait, moved to California. Then Ruth Webb handled. You made Martha Ray. You got her that television after. You got her that. I got her followed it. Yes. You certainly did, Martha. Very close. God bless her. Then Martha had a very bad accident. Yes. Up. Then she got married, and they're talking about this gentleman, who is Mark Harris. How are you, Mark? How you doing, Skip? God, to be talked about as young as you are, married to Martha Ray. 
What does, because you're going on all these shows, talk shows, and with the man on the radio from New York. Oh, Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Otherwise. It's hard yes, for me to pronounce that name, Howard words, Stern, for me. Howard uh, Sperm. Yeah, see, it's I hard for me. Mistake. But Howard Stern show. Why so many Howard Sterns that Well, we get, a, we get along, but uh, as far as uh, Howard Stern, it's great publicity. I right. love, you know, all the call-ins and right. uh, the dumb questions. They uh -huh. get dumb answers. What, you know, what's the big deal? I like it. You do? Yeah. Okay, getting back. You handled Martha Ray. Now you're handling Mark Harris, anything who is you, doing a wonderful singing job doing, you're working cabarets? Now? Yeah, in New York. In New York. Imagine, to go back after 14 years, where, where, your where, own where, home. Where are you working? Right now I'm going into Cerati Supper Club on East 58th mm -hmm. between 2nd and 3rd. It's the old La Familia. And that's where you grew up, in Manhattan? Brooklyn. 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 Uh-huh. You were in Garment Center. Something 18 about, years and in hair the garment dressing? industry. Hairdressing license to do that, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Martha Ray and you got together and got married. Yes. Everyone was talking about it. But now they're years. knowing who Mar Mark Harris is all really all about. What is Mark Harris really all about, really? I Some mean, lunatic not just, from Brooklyn, I don't know. No, you're more than that, Mark. A father of four. You're taking good care of a lady of oh, yes. a yes. lady who is. Have you had a child recently? <laughs> no, I have four. I have three from the first wife, and one seven-year-old from the second. Oh, I didn't know you had that many. You didn't? He has other children no. too. He has, no. other, he has, he has <laughs> other hobbies, world, darling. Yeah. Mark, you're taking care of this wonderful lady, this yes. wonderful human being who worked in Vietnam. Did the, you also got the medal for her? Tell well, me. Well, that, that was that was a tough push, you know, to go to Washington and to demonstrate. I didn't demonstrate in the 60s right. and get her the Medal of Freedom. But uh, taking care of Martha is no longer like I used to. She's quite ill now, and it's strictly the nurses at this point, not the way it was before. And you're not at home. You're, no, you're in a hotel. We're in a hotel, uh -huh. and I keep commuting to New York for my project that I'm bringing to Broadway. Uh -huh. which is Dorian Gray, and that's why I had the, the facelift. Dorian Gray? That, yeah. You had a facelift? Yeah. You were just Did the, well, partial. I had a neck redraping and everything. After all, if I'm going to play Dorian Gray, the right. musical, I have to look young. So that's why I looked at Ruth. I said, who is your doctor? And Ruth had a face job, too. This yes, is, Dr. Is Glick, I think, is the most marvelous doctor in the world. And this is Dr. Glick so at the end. Hi, well, doctor. How are you? so cute. You made these two <laughs> wonderful people. You, you do f f stars. Well, plastic surgeons of the stars have, a, have an innocuous beginning. Michael Jackson's plastic surgeon had the fortuitous event to be covering the emergency room at one of the local hospitals, and Michael Jackson had a burn to his face. Well, uh -huh. Ruth had an unfortunate event a couple of years back where she fell down some stairs, and instead of calling the orthopedic surgeon, they called me. And I'm why me? Mm -hmm. She had a small little cut over her head, over mm -hmm. her ear and her eye. And she's sitting there with two broken wrists, and they didn't even bother to call a, pla a orthopedic surgeon. They called me. Right. And that's my beginnings with the stars of Hollywood. Is that your beginnings, really? That's, well, a few years where back. You, where you grew up here, here in California? I grew up here locally, uh -huh. in the LA area. Mm -hmm. But you're with Cedars. I you're trained at Cedars partially. I did some research and laser research there a few years back. But uh -huh. I do most of my work out of Century City Hospital, Midway mm -hmm. Hospital. Mm -hmm. I try and avoid Cedars Sinai. I like Midway. Possible. I really like the Midway. What did you do with Mark just now? Mark is well, interesting. Well, Mark had a, a new technique that we've been uh, doing for several years. It's, it's a closed facelift. It uses liposuction and superficial suctioning and elevation of skin flaps through small little tiny holes. And I brought some cannulas, but they're, they're on the other part of the set to, right. to show. And we come in and do most of our work from behind the ear and under the chin and lift this whole area up and redrape the skin and pull it back up. So I guess his jawline, the contour that it had when he was in high school. And in fact, Mark brought us a picture tonight that shows that his his youthfulness has, has been regained. It's coming back, yes. Has it did regained. come back. What did you do here? You did something here. We did extensive liposuctioning. Really? <laughs> extensive. <laughs> that it means. Not quite from head to toe. We stopped somewhere above the belt. Oh, was I bad? Doctor, he brought, I just, oh, Ruth, I'm sorry. He brought a cameraman. Tell me about this cameraman he oh, brought the into OR room, the yeah. opera room. Well, he wanted to prove to his manlyhood, I think, Howard Stern. And, and <laughs> so, we, so we, had to, we had to document <laughs> this. And uh, we documented it. We saved some of the fat for Howard, but I think Howard didn't 
said he didn't need the fat. They've been doing some fat transfer to the penis, and I think Ruth wants to say something about that. What do you want to say? Oh, yes. Well, like he is the greatest, uh, as a sideline, he does penises, uh, larger or smaller. Howard or who? No, I don't. You, do Dr. That. Clay. No, I don't oh. do that. You do no. not? No, I don't. Well, I don't. <laughs> Doctor, tell me about the uh, the man oh, who just had his penis re uh, cut and they redid it. Is that is that called considered plastic surgery? Or well, that is reconstructive surgery. Reconstruction surgery. At its finest. Is that working, you think? Uh, I, I think it, I think it works, but I think he has one of these implants to help him help him satisfy his. Uh, Does he? Who? Partners. We're talking. Uh, we're talking no, about Bobbitt. Mark. Bobbitt. <laughs> yeah, I, was yeah. I told you I couldn't, about I told you now, I couldn't let, do that. If you're too. talking about Bobbitt, this lady right here, Sherry Spillane, who's Spillane. in your office, my partner. She's they're handling Tanya Harding. They're handling Joey Beautiful. Jo Joko. And who else? Um, this wonderful man. Well, uh, this this man, I cannot believe. John, John Wayne Bobbitt. Bobbitt, yes, you're handling. Tell me about the jobs you're getting. He got a porno movie he just finished. Well, that has nothing to do with us. Sherry, no? okay. Sherry is Bobbitt. I, I'm sort of shepherding Beautifoco. I think that he's a lot of fun, and he's very down to earth. I think he's a good actor, and we're trying to get together a production of Breaking Legs, right? Which has been done on Broadway to send him out with. I talk to him almost every day. Uh huh. What kind of guy? He's a wonderful guy with a great sense of humor, just a real down-to-earth guy who uh -huh. probably did what everybody else did. And uh, <laughs> But Tanya Harding. Well, Tanya Harding, I have not had any direct contact with. This is uh, Sherry, and How she's had she... at least 300 offers for her. Uh -huh. And she should be suing Penthouse for what they did. What, did, what did they do? They stole her, her uh, honeymoon pictures. Oh, they uh, stole them. They they stole them. Absolutely. I'm, we we have uh, we have the evidence. If she ever does sue Guccione, which a right. penthouse, which she should, we have the evidence that a deal was made for five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and uh, Gil Hooley got it. And I may be letting a lot of cats out of the bag, and I'm going to get hell when I get home. But that's what happened. <laughs> it, but, it's, but it's of no use unless she sues. Guccione, which she ought to. Right, 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 right. I mean, these uh, tapes of her honeymoon are selling for twenty-nine dollars a piece in the mm. tape stores, and Penthouse ran this, the, the whole thing, and and it's it's unbelievable. But she says Jeff would never do that to no. me. Tell me, <laughs> with Ruth Webb, mm -hmm. uh, you've been with her how long now? Well, I've been with Martha three years. Let's <laughs> <You've been laughs> spread rumors. Three years. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been with Martha three years? Yeah. You've been a good guy. I had ideas about you at the beginning. Everybody I mean, had No, but ideas. I did. I said, God, this young guy coming in from Las Vegas, moving in Martha Ray Marin, didn't I call you several times? And Everybody called saying, me because I couldn't get but, anybody you know, else. After knowing you, after getting to talk to you and getting to know what you really are like, you're very sympathetic. You're really concerned about Martha. You're concerned yes, about absolutely, everything. Yeah. About the daughter. Tell me about the daughter. What's happening between that? Well, my late mother taught me, if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing. There's nothing I have to say nothing. about her daughter. Okay, that's no. good. Okay, Mark. No. But your career is going really yes, good. Yes, uh, Ruth gives me a lot of uh, enthusiasm, and she just uh, heard some of the music to Dorian that we're going right. to uh, put on in New York, uh -huh. October 18th. And she says, you are so determined. Mm -hmm. You know, I made Dorian a fashion designer, as I was. Right. So the opening number, needless to say, is a runway with 10 fashion models coming out. And then uh -huh. they introduce me, and we sing the first production song, Another Night of Beauty. Uh -huh. So it looks very good. We have very important people attending. How do you feel, Dr. Glick, sitting there looking at these two wonderful people that you really worked on and looking the results? After, what are the results? How do you feel about your results? Well, I think they both have had experiences with plastic surgery. Or patients have had plastic surgery before, and they they both knew what was going to happen. But well, you I had? didn't. You've no. had? Well, I didn't. Mark, you've you've known people who've had plastic surgery, and oh, and there's a lot of nurturing, handholding that goes with with a new patient. Mark had to had to go through some of this, um, and he still is. He still has What do you mean questions. by nurturing? New? Well, there's a lot of like there's a, a lot of handholding with the recovery from a patient. Oh, I see. One of one of my mentors of plastic surgery said to me, it's not the surgery that your patient's paying for, it's the conversation. It's a conversation that takes place after the healing phase starts. And with it, sometimes things take a little bit longer right. to heal, especially with some of the new techniques, where you don't want to come up with a big scar from a facelift uh -huh. or th those, those stigmata that happen. Right, you do right. some new techniques, and sometimes it takes a little bit while longer to, to heal. And the overall picture is, is good, and we couple mm -hmm. some of these new techniques with uh, a lot of new uh, products in the skincare line, mm -hmm. and those things seem to augment 
the procedures. Doctor, when some cl client of yours walks into the office and, s and they look pretty good, real good, and they want a face job, are you honest? Are you, are you going to say, hey, you don't need I, it. You I, look good. I'm, Wait. Come on, tell me. I am honest with my are patients. You? Number one, those are the patients that you want to do because they make you look good. The, the ones that don't need oh, much you do done. do them. We get bodybuilders that, that you think that if my patients could look like you after surgery, uh -huh. before surgery, doing, doing you as a bodybuilder, right. I'd be famous. And so we, though we encourage the patients to feel their best, look their best, and it's a matter of interpretation. It's when you look in the mirror and say, Dr. Glick, I'd never come to see you for plastic surgery because I feel happy with myself. Right. Other people that, that, that look your age right. want to feel younger. And people that are 20, 25 years old still have mm -hmm. that image of looking in the right. mirror back at them and saying, this is not what I want. I have, I have a tremendous number of patients that are into bodybuilding, uh -huh. uh, that are naturalists, uh -huh. they're climbers, hikers that don't use makeup. And these patients still, they're vain. They come back and they want to have plastic surgery. How many, year, how many uh, surgeons did you have? How many, how many, how many times have you been How operating? many times have I, have I? Yeah. You've had several, haven't you, Ruth? Well, not complete ones. Well, Ruth, well, what do you mean by... We corrected three other plastic surgeons' facelifts on you. Uh, really? I think at least three. Correct. <laughs> at yes, least did. three. Yes, he really? did. Really? At least three. Yes, he And did. I think there might have been four, but it's... Uh -huh. it's it, well, no, 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 no. I never... I, it's always three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. You weren't satisfied yourself looking well, at yourself? Well, I'm always satisfied. Well, but the thing of it is, with me, is not a matter of vanity, but I handle some very important people, and I intend to keep on... In, handling very important people and they expect you as as their mentor their agent their mm -hmm. whom they look up to right to be vital and young and uh, energetic uh, dr. Glick has taken care of the looks uh-huh uh, I usually sleep one full day a week full so day I sleep a is small. that helpful doctor it is sleep to me. well some people when they lie flat they do get swollen a little bit but uh, rest, 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 rest mm -hmm. is important now you see, That's with important. me, it was pure vanity. I had to it do was research. For you. <laughs> I, had pure, I had to do research for uh -huh. the part because uh -huh. we made this Dorian every right. ten years right. a deal right. with the devil, who I wrote in as the doctor. Uh huh. Nip and tuck. The portrait ages. Right. He doesn't. So it's a nip and tuck moment in the play. Uh -huh. Mark, what I don't understand. We yeah. s we saved you. you. You initially told me you were going to Costa Rica for surgery. Yes, I was. It's and true. I said to you very, very I was. nonchalantly, I said, if you have problems after surgery, Mark. I'd be happy to take care of you. And I think that set in your mind, didn't it? Yes. And that, that, that solidified our it's relationship. It's true. He I did. He, so. I was going to Costa Rica to get a uh, facelift, you know, and stuff. So instead, uh, we met at Ruth Webb's uh, Christmas mm -hmm. party. Uh -huh. And he was telling me, you know, I mean, uh -huh. he put the fear of God into me, you know, with this Costa Rica business. No, it was the grace of Glick. There was <laughs> the no grace of, the grace of Glick. Mark, Dr. Glick. I'm yes. looking at you. Are you satisfied now with Very. Dr. Glick? Absolutely. And he doesn't even know how famous he'll be if I pull off the Dorian Gray theater, you know, uh -huh. just think of that. You don't want me to be in the, the, be in the, the program? No, not in the oh, okay. He doesn't know the story of Dorian Gray, and now that I've remade it So you're inserting surgery, him in the story? Hmm? You're inserting him No, in I made a part, not a for him to play, yes. but the doctor is the devil who Dorian makes the deal with. With, I so see. So every time the painting ages, he goes for a nip and tuck. Uh -huh. Ruth Webb, busy lady, sewing so Mickey Rooney, we know that, uh, but about a book. Your book is coming out the Ruth Webb book. Tell me about that. Your memoirs. Everybody's right. Marlon Brando. I just finished Marlon Brando's memoirs that he wrote. Doesn't mention about his wives. Doesn't mention about Hollywood. He doesn't mention anything. What does he write about? Zero. People get it. You'll see what I mean. Wait until Peter Mansell's book come out. Then you'll see it. This book of Brando. Getting three million dollars stashed in the bank for what? Doesn't mention anything about. Are you mentioning what's happening in Hollywood? Mickey, are you mentioning the dirt what people want to hear? I'm mentioning the truth, which people do not tell in their own biographies. Right. Go ahead. And uh, I have gone down to the bookstore and gotten the names of at least a hundred famous books, uh, book biographies. Right. I have read probably about 20, only two of them were interesting because they're so afraid to say anything about themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Terry Moore, Little Twinkle Toes, and <laughs> that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't slandered anybody, but I said, I've told the truth. And this is the truth that hasn't been told in anything else that has been done. Go ahead. 
Well, that's like it's been done. You're you're going to tell the me. Book, the book the book is is ready. There will be a large ad coming out in National Variety next week, mm -hmm. in which uh, I have the name of at least a hundred famous stars that you have in, in in a web, all in a web, and. Uh, my book is called "Won't You Come Into My Parlor?" Won't, won't you? you step, won't you step into my parlor? Right. Uh, good title. Good yeah, title. I think it's good. And then under that, I have. Do you feel that any of these stars have left something out of their biographies? Oh, I see. And yeah. I have so you're going to put like that this, in there, and that's going to uh -huh. go in, and that's going to go in within the next two weeks, mm -hmm. and then it's going into the publisher's uh, magazine. Right. And I uh, said, we're going to hit everybody. And of course, you'll have to turn this thing around about three times to be able to see all the names on it because of the spider web going this way, this way, and this way. I'm going to get a lot of attention for this. Ruth. Yes. Besides Mickey Rooney, who is the hottest that makes you upset a little more than Mickey Rooney? <laughs> you, mean, you, you mean interest? Yeah, who is really in your book that's. Give us a little. Tenled, you know. I have so many things in my book I can't begin to tell you. I've got enough for about four books. This is why I've had to rewrite. But the person I'm most interested in handling and right. working with right now, the greatest challenge is Joey Butifoco because I think but he's a, a lot of fun. Butifoco, but what? But why? Why? Not, Not just. I don't know why. Why, oh, Ruth? Why? Because I see I'm, zero there. I see ze absolutely zero. Well, I, well, why? Then, well, there was absolutely zero when I got uh, Rooney out of the ash can. No, 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 no. Mickey Rooney was a star, and he's talented. He's talented, but, but he's a but, monster. Now, this other man just works in cars. Now, Ruth, come on. <laughs> please. Why? Why are you dealing with such a man? Be because, I think, because I think I'm so talented, I can make a star out of anybody. Well, that's what Howard Hughes did. <laughs> that's right. He didn't of badly, did he? Mark Harris, you, you, your clothes. Tell me about your clothes. Your line of clothes. You do a line of clothes. Yes, yes. I'm, Did you know that, Doctor? He has a line of clothes? Of course. Yeah, I'm going into New York. You next dress very week. nice, Doctor. My wife dresses me. Your She's wife my dresses wife. you? My wife, oh. Susan. Men's wife, you like the. Did men all. You, did you dress any of your uh, husbands? No, but I dressed all my clients to go down for their auditions oh, in New York. Okay. And they were all against the type, and I still uh -huh. do it, and they'd get the jobs mm -hmm. because. There'd be like Man of La Mancha, uh -huh. a blonde Aldonza who uh -huh. didn't fit the part at all except she uh -huh. could sing it. They all went in with the with the with the boots and mm -hmm. the wigs. Mm -hmm. Everybody I've ever sent in for anything in New York <laughs> was always dressed for the part. Mark dresses himself. I dress my wives. <laughs> I you dress your wives did. because you are I, you're, yeah. you have your own line of clothes. Yeah, I have the Come. line of shirts coming out. Next mm -hmm. week we're just finishing the line in New York. So uh -huh. I go in, you know, like for theater and for this. Right. Pretty busy. That's why it was just normal to make Dorian Gray a fashion designer. So you're, the line of shirts. You're really hot over this tar Dorian Absolutely. Gray. Absolutely. Donald Trump confirmed to come already, and we have a lot of big people for back his audition. Uh huh. It takes a lot of money to make a musical. Tell me about <laughs> more of your nightclub act. I mean, well, you, you were I there. Know, I, know I you saw cut you in at some Shea, Josephine's, Shea Josephine's, but you got up there and you sang, and it was great. But I meant more what you're going to be doing in New York on 58th Street. Well, you know, I. Are you going few, to? Have, uh, yes. You uh, had a girl with you last night. You're not going to have her again. Are no. You? This time, well, she's great. I don't say no. no she's I didn't great. Say but what happened last week when I started at Cerati's, I uh, was doing this, that, and the other thing, and all of a sudden I just hit them with some political satire. Right. Like I touched on. And uh, then one man yelled out after I finished this song on Clinton, he says, Do you have anything on Cuomo? And it just so happens <laughs> I did. And uh, I brought the house down, really. You have something about Clinton. Doesn't Mark Harris stop her? Clinton. Nothing at really? all. No, it the only thing I might have is that I was the uh, forerunner of disliking him. That's the only claim uh -huh. amongst all these liberals in Hollywood. Doctor, your, your uh, surgeon, the bodies, the whole, you do all kinds of things, reconstructions? I do pretty much head to toe. Really? What made you get in? Where are you from? Originally from California, but made you become a plastic surgeon? I always wonder why a young man like yourself. Oh. Timing. Timing? Timing. Money? Not really money. I, I think uh, on, initially doctor, when I decided I wanted to be a surgeon, I wanted to be a cardiac surgeon okay. because it was big money. Uh -huh. But there's, a, there's a, a, a special part of plastic surgery that allows a surgeon to be the hand holder, like I was saying earlier, a compassionate person. And I can basically practice medicine irregardless of all the nonsense going on with health care any way that I want to. Uh -huh. If I want to make a house call, I've made house calls on Mark. I believe I made a house call on Ruth, too. Really? At the, at the appropriate Because uh -huh. I can set up my own hours, my own time. Uh -huh. And uh, that's the beauty of plastic surgery. It's basically so what a general surgeon 
or general practitioner used to be. We can, we can do just about anything. Psychology. You must have study psychology because the way you, you're dealing with your patients, you say you have to nurture that's right. them. That's right. You've got to get into their brain. It's, to a, make it's often a close call. Sometimes there are patients that are really not uh, candidates because their mind is so messed up. Can you really tell them? You, you have to be very careful. Yeah. Be very careful in certain patients. Because I know a lady that went to get, to, what is it, suction? What do you call it? Liposuction? Yeah, and she died. She, she, yes, she died right under the uh, table or under the eye. For what reason, I don't know, but she was very young. She was like 50. Yeah. But is it because of mentally she was, she was terrified? Well, I, she I, was think, terrified. I think the most of the risks of surgery are with anesthesia. That's it. And That's you happened. have to be careful that your patient's not taking a blood thinner or something like that. That is and the most. That their, that their appropriate mm. uh, health is, is in, in, in satisfactory condition to meet the challenge of surgery. You don't want to have a stress test on the operating table. You want to have, make sure the patient's clear for surgery. Ruth had a, a very long, protracted, preoperative uh, exam because she has a history of heart problems. And, uh, and we had to have clearance from her cardiologist before she could, and she, she went through with flying colors. Do you know what's puzzling me right now, doctor? What's that? At Cedars, 98 years old, who is in the hospital, brain, t brain surgeon. I'm looking at you. Robert You're Frank. a doctor. Tell me, 98 years I've old. Got, I've got 96-year-old patients that make you look you're kidding. Like you're not even moving. You mean you've operated the, on 96? I've never heard of this. Well, for emergency emergency really? situations, for problems with uh, with the vision, with their eyelids, when the, uh -huh. the eyelids come down so far that they can't see. And they're very active people. There are some 90-year-olds really? that are chasing 76-year-olds that I have as patients. Really? Yes, I they love are. that. Everything and, is relevant. Uh, <laughs> I have one patient that's 96 that's, or 94. Her name is Linda. Uh -huh. She says, I'd call me Linda. She is so vain. She had a skin cancer on her nose. We fixed that. Yes. And I said, we're going to fix this. Just think of it as you just had your nose job, mm -hmm. the nose job that she's always wanted. By taking a little bit of skin right. off from the skin cancer, she got her nose ticked up a little bit. Uh -huh. And she goes all the way out to Temecula, which is about 40 miles to date a 72-year-old. Right. Amazing. Some of them have What's energy. What's the thing that injection and it moves around? Uh, what is that collagen. called? Well, collagen. collagen. Well, collagen. Dangerous, they say. It can be. Any, can, anything can be dangerous, but, that but, is, but it can be injected into an artery or vein, and it can cause problems. It moves around. It can move around. You can get immune problems to it. You can get allergic reactions to it. I do a lot of fat transfer. I use your own body fat, uh -huh. process it there during surgery, and then re-inject it in certain, certain places. Uh -huh. And it's another type of graft. Is that, that what use. you did with him? Um, no, Mark. Mark. <laughs> Mark. Use it again. Mark, it wanted out. Me, Mark wanted me to give it to Howard, and Howard. <laughs> Howard, Howard just wanted to get Howard rid of it. Really <laughs> need it. Oh, you took it out. Yeah. yeah you took it out. out. Sure. I would have liked much, to send it to my first what life. What was your waste? Uh, how, much did he, how much did you take out of it? What did he? Mark had about, oh, 1,600 cc's, about uh, close to two quarts. Really? Ooh. Ooh, but nice. we did a lot of body shaping uh -huh. in, the, in the chest area, in the, in the abdomen, mm -hmm. the hips, and, of course, underneath the neck was, uh, was just some, some fine body sculpting. <laughs> as look, as you're looking at it. Speaking of that chest. Yes. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes. Oh, he didn't put, he didn't put the hair on. Speaking of that, speaking the hair. Of that <laughs> hair on the we'll both give him the globe tomorrow. <laughs> years, years, years ago, years ago, before they started making real full eye, false eyelashes, I used to cut off my own hair and dip it in nail polish and put them on my eyes, my, my lashes, one by one for uh -huh. false eyelashes. And I would, you know, mascara them. And then I found out that my own hair, including my pubic hair, was too fine to use. Use your pubic hair? <laughs> a natural well, plastic I started, surgeon. I started to, but it really, wasn't, it really wasn't, didn't make the best kind of hair. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I used to go out on dates with people that I knew quite, no, I didn't know them that well, or they wouldn't have let me come in. <laughs> 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 I, would, I would, you know, kind of case this up and down, and we'd be getting ready to make love, uh -huh. and I would take a pair of manicure scissors, and I would take a hunk. Wouldn't be from up here, though. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and and the, and the poor guy, you know, he he thought he was he thought he was going to get a blow job. Oh, <laughs> oh, is that all? <laughs> I was. Hey. Yeah. I'd say not a bobbit job, right? Oh, <laughs> not a bobbit job. Have you?